Force Touch or 3D Touch? We've all heard about it and seen it, but do we ever use it? Well you should because there's loads of stuff you can use it for. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal and this is 30 things you can do with 3D Touch on your iPhone. Before you start using 3D Touch or Force Touch, you need to make sure that it's turned on and set up to your preferences. And to do that, you need to go to Settings, then General, Accessibility, and about halfway down, you will find the 3D Touch option. Obviously, there is a toggle to turn it on and off. And then there is also a sensitivity here, which you can slide to firm or light or keep as medium. And then down at the very bottom, you have the option to do 3D Touches to test how it works on your screen. Pretty much every icon on your home screen will have force touch capabilities of some kind. For example, on YouTube, a force touch will allow you to look at your subscriptions, create a video, or search for a video. Social media applications obviously have a lot, such as Facebook, which has search, going live, uploading photos and videos, and writing posts. And some applications will have very limited options, which are ones like Push Bullet, which simply have the option to share the application. When you're downloading or updating an application, you can control it by force touching on the icon, which will give you various options. Those include pausing a download, making it a higher or lower priority, or cancelling the download if you don't want to download it anymore. When you have folders that have unread markers on them, instead of having to go into the folder and look at the application, you can force touch on the folder, and that will give you a quick indication of where the unread marker is coming from, in this case, the mail, and I could also rename the folder if I wanted to. Some icons can go even further with their force touch as well. Take the weather icon, for example. A force touch on here gives you a widget, and you can even add this widget to your today screen by tapping on add widget, now when I scroll down and look at my notifications and then swipe to the right, the weather widget has now been added to my today screen. To clear all your notifications at once, of which there could be a lot, you can force touch the cross in the top right hand corner and that will give you the option to clear all notifications. When viewing notifications you can interact with them, for example if I look at a Gmail, I have the option to archive it or reply to it. And for a reminder, I could mark it as completed or remind me again in an hour or tomorrow. The control center has four actions, each of which allow you to use force touch. We'll take the flashlight as a first example. Force touching on that allows you to change the sensitivity of your torch from bright, medium to low. If you force touch on the timer, you can use preset timers. If you force touch on the calculator, you can get the last sum that was calculated. And force touching on the camera gives you options such as taking a photo, recording slow-mo, and taking a selfie. When you're in an application, if you force touch on the very left side of the screen, that will open up multitasking. If you swipe right very quickly, that will go to your last known application. If you force touch again on the left hand side and then just ease it to the middle, that opens up multitasking in general so you can switch to whichever application you want to look at. When you're typing out a message, you can use the keyboard as a trap pad by force touching on it and then dragging the cursor around the screen to put the cursor where you want to. Also, if you wanted to delete messages, you can use force touch on the delete button to control the speed of your deleting. So if you force touch harder, it deletes quicker. If you ease off on the delete button, it goes slower. You can force touch on phone numbers in the call log to get options such as calling them back or adding them as a new contact. Force touching on a person's name in contacts will give you all the various contact options. When in iMessaging, you can force touch the blue button to get the extra special message features that include sending a message with invisible ink or sending a screen effect such as balloons, confetti and fireworks. In the photo gallery, if you force touch an image, you can preview it and then to make changes, simply swipe up such as copy, share or delete. If you force touch an image, you can continue to apply pressure to go to full screen. If you watch a live photo, you can simply force touch on it in Safari, you can force touch on links to start previewing what's inside it. If you want to do something with that link, you can swipe up, or if you just want to jump to that link, you can force touch all the way and add more pressure. Force touching a reminder will give you the option to edit the time or remind you at a certain location. You can force touch a book to preview it in iBooks and swipe up to share it. And for maps, you can force touch on a location to set a marker. Force touch on it again to give you directions or remove a marker. And also if you force touch on a place, such as Starbucks, you can call them or get directions. 
And in notes, if you force touch on the top screen, you'll be able to preview a note. You can slide up to get the options that we've already seen in photos, and you can continue to press harder to jump into the note and start editing it. Force touching on music in the music application will give you all sorts of options such as adding to a playlist, loving it or disliking it and shuffling it around your playlist. And emails have the same three force touch actions that we've seen in various applications. Preview, swipe up to do something with it or force touch all the way to jump into the email. And if you've selected one of the live wallpapers from the wallpaper gallery, when you're on the lock screen, force touch it to give you a nice graphical effect. Now if this has whetted your appetite for iPhone tips, then you might want to sink your teeth into my mammoth iPhone 7 guide, which includes more than 100 tips. And I squeeze it all into just under 30 minutes, so if you want to know more, click on the link on the screen now. Otherwise, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the Video Gadgets channel if you love content like this, and I'll see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your tech day, bye for now.